Yo, 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 Surreal Talk Radio, your man, Calicota Surrealists on WPRK 91.5 FM Winter Park. We are kicking it after dark with our special guest in the building. Hey, right now I got my comedy co-host in here rocking with me tonight. Introduce y'all to him. This brother right here is no stranger to the show. He's been on here several times before. I got my man, comedian Victor White in this thing. What's going on, brother? Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you, man. I appreciate you having me. Hey, it's another man, day that, in the lab. <laughs> that, that, that deep voice. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Well, listen, man. I want to tell you, bro. You did your thing out there that uh, J Love and Calico Valentine's be they bash, man. Man, it was a pleasure, man, being in the building. And the love, man, it was overwhelming. That's what it is. Definitely got to do it again. I'm proud of you, man. I'm definitely proud of you. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed yourself, man. More last to come. That's what it is, man. You got another show. I see you got a show coming up with this weekend, right? Yeah. yeah we, we definitely going to put it out there let the people know. Okay. All right, man. Well, listen, we got a hot show lined up tonight. We're going to kick things off with my surreal topic of the day. We got music from around the way. We got our throwback track and my favorite part of the show, the pump it or dump it. We all get to call in and let us know if the track we playing is hot or not. All right. Uh, but now, man, without any further ado, my special guest, my special guest, just guess <laughs> who's in the house. My special guest chilling with us tonight. This sister right here is a model that holds several different beauty pageant titles. Uh, she's been in movies. She's a singer. She's a mother. Uh, she has a charity for young girls. We're going to talk about all of that uh, with Miss Former Miss America, Mrs. Erica Dunlap, what's going on? Good evening. Good, very late evening. Yeah, yeah, we starting a little late. Don't, don't, don't dump on me. It's but speaking good. of late, we got my man DJ Rogue, who's always late. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just shout out to you. <laughs> yeah, we running a little late, but we gonna get it going. We gonna hey. get it going. DJ Rogue in Welcome. the building. Look, he come with gifts and everything. <laughs> well, listen, uh. Thank you so much for doing our show, helping us grow. My pleasure. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much for that. Uh, are you ready to get going? Let's do it. She's like, I've been ready 15 minutes ago. <laughs> All right, we're ready to knock it out. <laughs> All right, we're going to kick things off with my surreal topic of the day. My topic tonight is diversity. Mm. I'm going to talk about diversity. Okay. Yeah, man. Um, so first of all, let, let's get your thoughts. What are your views on diversity? <clears throat> So when I was Miss America, that was my platform topic. So that was a thing that I traveled the country and talked about was diversity. And I think that I was just thinking about it from the lens of um, race, religion, um, sexual orientation, respecting people. You don't have to do what they do. You don't have to um, even understand what they do or how they do it. But, you know. It, you just have to respect the fact that people have their own choice. So I feel like when I was younger, I had this, you know, rose colored glasses, like this ideal of what diversity was. And then as time has gone on, it has changed for me. And um, diversity is still the same thing. So to me, as I explain it to kids and just to people in general, is diversity is like having uh, a bunch of a bunch of different M and M's, right? You got peanut M and M's, you got almond M and M's, you got coconut cream filled M and M's, you got all these different kinds. But at the end of the day, it's still it's still candy, it's still M and M, you know, like it's still right, you know, satisfies your sweet tooth. So like they're different, but it's still the same thing. So that's essentially what diversity is all about: is recognizing the differences. But then the inclusion part of it is okay, well, how do we bring them all together and make it useful? How do, how do we bring all of these different opinions, all these different backgrounds, all these different religions and, and, um, and ethnicities, how do we bring them all together to have some type of meaningful impact? So to me, it's like diversity is, it's, it's the recognition of all these different people and different things, but it's also so much bigger than that it's like how do i have real value it's not just about why am i different or recognizing that i'm different okay in a lineup of all white women i'm clearly different but then how do i have value based on 
the difference that I have with all these different people. You know, like, am do I still have the same merit and same weight, which I should, as opposed to just like me being some, you know, okay, you're the token black girl. Right. No, I'm the value. Like, what's my value? Not just being a token. Got you. You know, so. <clears throat> Definitely, I got you. And um, man, it's beautiful the way you laid that out because mm -hmm. here in my notes, I have, uh, I wanted to break this down in categories of race, religion, politics, and gender. And um, so I wanted to, let's deal with race real quick. Um, I'm just kind of give a, you know, kind of choppy answers, choppy uh, questions here. Dealing with race. Um, tell us your views on interracial relationships. Now y'all know I married a white boy. <laughs> <laughs> and I still date white boys. Okay. But I also date black men. And I, I like, I like men. Okay, so let's just be clear about that i like men i like i like men who are who know that they're men and who are you know they they know i'm a woman they know how to treat me like a lady that's what i really like so you know red and yellow black and white mm -hmm. they are precious in his sight i don't really care i just right. i like them all so um it's a challenge now because i don't ever want to be hypocritical but i've grown i've learned so much like i don't if it works for you, it works for you. Like I have cousins who um, there's there's three sisters and I think all three of them, no, two of them have relationships with white guys and they have, you know, four children apiece and it's great. And the guys are easygoing. They come to family reunion. They fit in. They don't say anything awkward. <laughs> you know, yeah. like it just works really well and you can tell that they are supposed mm -hmm. to be together. They're supposed to be soulmates or they're supposed to have brought these children into the world so to me it's like if that's what you want to do and you really feel at peace every night and you don't feel like you ever have to um, compromise yourself or um, put yourself in a situation where you're feeling like aggravated constantly by this person not understanding or not being willing to be a part of your culture mm -hmm. then go for it absolutely go for it I feel like love is love and you know if you really love somebody sometimes it can shock you I never thought growing up that I would marry a white guy but I did because he was the guy at the time who treated me like he cared about more than just sleeping with me you know he wanted to get to know me he wanted to get to know what I like to do and he was interested in developing hobbies together and just stuff that you know wasn't superficial he actually wanted to get to know me so I was like okay well we could we could date and I gave him a hard time for like six months and then finally I was like okay I'm your girlfriend <laughs> and then but to his credit he was chasing after me in college. So I was just like, what am I going to do with you? I'm you. We cannot date. You know, mm -hmm. it just didn't even make sense. And then when he pursued me after school, it was like, OK, well, I'll give it a shot because at the time, the and this is not a diss. It's just the reality. The black guys that I was dealing with mm -hmm. weren't interested in moving forward past the physical yeah. that was it so it was like i'm not trying to hook up forever i want to get married All i right. thought i needed to be married i wanted to be a wife so when i was 25 i got married and um it was a really good uh starter relationship it was a good starter marriage for me i i just needed to get a little you know appetizer okay <laughs> and so i'm ready for my entree <clears throat> and i don't know where he is but wherever he is you know i'm getting there i'm not ready right now but when it's time okay you know yeah, you got some good experience under your belt yeah all right cool okay. so um religion i want to talk about i want to we can all of these topics these breakdowns we can do a whole full-blown show on but we just gonna kind of hit them uh religion what is your uh view on i'm gonna say this about religion before i have you uh speak on it um religion is one of those things it's like um all it is in my opinion is um you know just different opinions mm -hmm. it's just different opinions about good versus evil um you know in different histories mm -hmm. you know literature and stuff like that or whatever um but my question is how do you think we can coexist 
uh, dealing with diversity with religion? Hmm. You're asking a tough Miss America question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on stage. Um, I would say, you know, um, I grew up Baptist and growing up in the South, Black Baptist is a whole experience, right? And I'm grateful that I have the foundation um, in in um, the Baptist church that I did because I feel like it really helped to ground me when I did become this overnight celebrity and I had to balance a lot of stuff and I had to, a lot of stuff was being thrown at me and I had to figure it out really quickly. Like, do I want to be this girl or do I want to be, you know, respected for um, my intellect, respected for my opinions and well-formed opinions, educated opinions and, or do I want to be a hot girl? Do I want to be an it girl? You know, and so I had to make that decision and I also had to remember that I have a whole legacy of people that are are paying attention to me. I've got the older generation that has um, always supported me and those people who have been in my corner. They're watching to, you know, make sure that I'm still who they think I am. But then there's also the kids that I'm influencing. I want to make sure that they see something that they can be proud of and that they want to emulate. I don't want to just be uh, a trendy hot for the moment fad I want it to be a long lasting um, and I I have been able to have this you know 20 year career off of being an inspiration and being a role model and making life mistakes and hopefully sharing the lessons out of that to young people so that they can remember oh Miss Erica said that one time or yeah she did say that was gonna happen and you know I hope that those moments like trigger for young women and young men, because I, I actually, I met a guy, um, a friend of mine is a loctician and she was doing this guy's hair and I was in the salon just, you know, talking with her and hanging out and the guy was like, I know you. I don't know you, sir. <laughs> but he was like, yeah, I know you. You came to my fifth grade class and you actually picked me out. I was Miss Orlando at the time and I picked him out of the whole fifth grade class to like be my volunteer. And he was like, I totally remember that. And, you know, it really impressed me because nobody ever picked me for anything. Wow. And he's a grown man at that time. And that was like five years ago. And I just think about, OK, Miss Dunlap. You know, auntie was doing her thing back then. And that was that's good. That's that's what you should be doing. I feel like I am not this forever princess, but I'm I'm a queen of my community. And what that means to me is that I put in the work. I've gone to nursing homes. um, I've gone to elementary schools, middle schools, high schools. I have done fashion shows. I've hosted things. I've done all the things I have done. The picnics outside. And I have been ingrained in the Orlando community so deeply that people have mostly positive stories about me. Right. There's going to be some that, you know, and some a lot of stories are fabricated. I, I hear stuff about myself all the time and I'm like, yeah. really? I didn't I didn't know that I did that. Well, so. this, this one really wasn't on my thing, but I just get, just got inspired to ask you this. Um, could you be with somebody that has a different religion? I got all the way off the topic of religion, but I was coming back to it. So I grew up Baptist. I feel like that was great ground for me. Um, I can't. I don't think I could um, be with somebody who I know that I can't be with somebody who doesn't have any religion. Ah, okay. okay. That couldn't work for me. So like if you were um, atheist or if you felt like, you know, they're just, you know, there's a God, but I don't really subscribe to that and I don't deal with it. That's not for me. Um, I have, I dare say switch, but I have transitioned and I've learned a lot of things about just spirituality as a whole. Like you said, I feel like it is a lot of good versus evil in all of the stories. Right. And um, I respect Judaism. I respect um, Islam and I respect so many other uh, cultural religions that make sense. Okay. A lot of their, their manuscripts and their, their holy documents make sense to me gotcha. and maybe not all of it but various portions of it yeah but i could not live with somebody who doesn't have because for me i <laughs> am i am intent on on the man who i am with 
and the man who is going to be the head of my household has to have a grounding place okay because life is crazy things get crazy i may be a little crazy and i need for him to be like anchored in something got you yeah. As opposed to just I, like floating. I, I kind of want to turn this into a whole what kind of man does Miss, Miss America want? And I wasn't going to skip this next one, politics for sake of time, but I got to ask because yeah. you, you ran for, um, for office at one point in time. Okay. Um, what kind of policies do you have uh, for, I don't know, um, maybe like racial profiling or uh, police brutality, something like that? I have, um, I'm, I'm glad, I'm proud that I did run for office. I ran for uh, city commissioner um, back in 2017. And I did it because I felt like that was the next thing for me to do was to serve my, co my community in that capacity. Gotcha. Like I've already done all of the, the volunteer and the, all of that work so I wanted to just do something like really official where my opinions um, were able to impact generations of people right. officially yeah. but um, I'm really glad that I didn't win too because when I look at those different policies about police brutality I have um, I have family members who are police officers and sheriff's officers and state troopers and I have friends um, people I went to high school with who who serve in uh, law enforcement and it's just it's really tough. Rig? Yeah, I guess it's I tough got for you. me because I'm like I there's so much that needs to be yeah. dealt with, but again, yeah. it's almost like religion. It's like the yeah. forces of good and evil. Yeah, but there's it's, bad it's, cops it's, and yeah. good cops. Yeah, there's so many know? levels to this stuff. There's so many levels to this. And um, okay, so the last one I want to deal with is gender, and my question for this one is. Um, since you were uh, Miss America, how do I want to ask this question? This is, I, I think, I think, I'm well, go a good one. Knock the head right. off. Um, <laughs> as a woman, as a woman, do you feel that a transgender um, should qualify as Miss America? So we're actually in the midst of that conversation right now as an organization. And there is interesting that the younger women who are like competing now, they are all about the equity, the equality of having, right. you know, the the future of the woman participate in Miss America. So we've had a hundred years of it, but the hundred years is one thing. Now they're looking for the next hundred years. And I'm like, okay, I hear what you're saying. And I have a lot of friends who are transgender. And so it becomes a really, it becomes challenging for me because, um, I mean, I just feel like, there's something for everybody, and this is our thing. So, quite frankly, uh, yeah, no, this is this is our competition. Right. You have your competitions. Be you great in yours, and let us be let 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 regular women have right. some. Hey, I love can it. we I just love have anything? Answer. And this it. is a conversation that I've had with other friends who are you know um drag performers female impersonators uh, people who live their life as transgender and so i've had these conversations i need to have more of these conversations so i can really fully understand i don't ever want to be a biased person right i feel like i'm not prejudiced but i do have prejudice we all do we all do yeah it's kind of healthy it's healthy to have stereotypes yeah it's not necessarily healthy to um, enforce them on somebody right. where you know right. y y you're getting in the way of their their life right um, yeah. Yeah. but I, I just I don't know that's just me and it's not even because I won it's just like okay well you know girl uh uh this is just not it you can compete with me and everything else right. but this is just one area that's just just for me so just let me have it right right yeah no I, I totally agree with you a hundred percent on that um Man, you know what? I'm finna scrap my pump it or dump it for don't, the sake of time. I want to hear it. You want to hear it? Don't, yeah. Okay, well, well listen, you gonna rock with us. We can do it then. We gonna I, go got I, I have a she little bit of time. My baby sleeps, so, okay, yeah, <laughs> so I have time. time. All right, cool. Well, listen, we finna do this then. We finna get into our pump it or dump it. Um, open up the hotlines. Make sure this phone's going. All right, cool. All right, so we're about to do the pump it or dump it right now. Y'all get ready to call in and let us know uh, if this track that I'm about to play is hot or not. Um, the phone number is 
2915. One more time, 407-646-291.5. Um, so I'm going to play this. The name of this artist is Alpha P. Um, and the name of this joint right here is called The One. Right here on Surreal Talk Radio. The One. Yeah, it's The One right here. Check it out. <laughs> Let me know what y'all think about the song. If we talk or we eat it up I don't lie to my bitch cause I need it to be enough Regardless of my bullshit dog I know what home is This ain't even weak shit player this is what growth is Talking to a lone rep nigga we try and own shit You wanna keep your bitch at home we try and home flip I know what I got and trust her to get it done See your bitch is a 10 but I'd rather have the one I know what I got and I trust her to get it done See your bitch is a 10 but I'd rather have the one Yo let a nigga cross what I have I'm on his ass certain shit she ain't even gotta ask I'm going half Look at she in her bag, I'm in the mask In the Jeep doing the dash like it's a Jag Aside from the fact that she bad, shorty a Sag She just be sipping a glass, I'm blowing gas She load up the mag, I let it flash I put up the cash and let her brag I know what I got and trust her to get it done See your bitch is a 10, but I'd rather have the one I know what I got and I trust her to get it done See your bitch is a 10, but I'd rather have the one Yo, I know what I got and trust her to get it done See your bitch is a 10, but I'd rather have the one I know what I got and I trust her to get it done See your bitch is a 10, but I'd rather have the one Yo Yo, Surreal Talk Radio, we back. Your man, Calico, the Surrealist. Got comedian Vic White in here. Yes, sir. And, of course, our special guest, uh, Miss America, Miss Erica Dunlap. Hey. Chilling with us tonight. Um, all right, so we'll go around the room. Start with the ladies first. What you think about the track we just played? Should we get rid of it or you like it? I mean, it's all right. It could, it could pump. <laughs> okay. okay. It could pump. I mean, I did like there was this one lyric that, kind of caught me so I was like okay All right. he's got bars I did think it was a little matchy matchy it was a little rhymey rhymey yeah 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 so okay. you know All but right. it was cool Vic what you think man uh, he hard on the play. <laughs> he, he, he kind of hard on the play. <laughs> <laughs> I think he done my last. Very white, hey. what you think? <laughs> hey, we pumping it. All right. But the lyrics is making me dump him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my, my man said he's looking for the one. <laughs> your girl is, a, I can't say what he said, but your girl is a 10 or whatever. He looking for the one. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Okay. Can we just for two seconds get into that? Because like I have a hard time with us in 2023 still like referring to each other as the B word, and I'm just like y'all still doing that. Hey, listen, still? We, we 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 in our I can't say how old she is, but we uh, <laughs> we're of age. <laughs> I, I'm in my 40s. I get it. You know, I am 41 and proud uh, of it. Okay, uh, I have earned every gray hair that I've dyed. I ain't say it. I ain't say it. <laughs> but I'm serious. I'm like, come on, man. If you look no, for the one, you. I'm with you. Who I'm is the you. one that is gonna let you? Refer to women like that. Hey, it is. That's what I'm talking about. See, unless we're gossiping, she need to be looking for the one. <laughs> he ain't the one. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We got the song. We gonna pump it. All right, cool. Um, anybody want to call in and dispute that? Your phone number again: four seven six four six two nine one five. In the meantime, about to get real live with our Miss America. Um, <clears throat> all right, so cool. You was born and raised in Orlando, right? Yeah. Born and raised. What part of town? Well, like, I Orange know Center. I, Orange. Whoa. Clear Lake. I'm yeah. really from Clear Lake, but I claim Orange Center. Yeah, it is. I, I, <laughs> at first, you know, I'll be honest with you. I thought you were a Dr. Phillips girl or something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Orange I think most people do. Yeah. I, I maintain. Mercy Drive with me. <laughs> 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 well, we're actually Martin Luther King Drive and proud to say that we have in our neighborhood, and I still live there. I grew up there. I moved away. When I moved back to Orlando, I moved to like I I lived in Baldwin Park. I lived I lived over off of Americana for a little while, and I actually liked it because I was paying like nine hundred dollars a month for a three bedroom, and it was like Ooh. this is living. <laughs> and so at the time, I was just in transition, yeah. and it was cool. I had no problems whatsoever. My mom used to come over to my spot and was like, "Why do you live over here?" And I'm like. 
because I got three bedrooms right. and I've got a lot of clothes. So I got to be so, able to put stuff everywhere. So for all y'all who think Erica Dunlap is is this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a bargain hunter. <laughs> Even with my house. <laughs> it is, it is. See, I ain't say none of that. All right. Ooh. All right. So now you, but you are a graduate of UCF. Yeah, I went to the quote unquote white schools. I went to Bo- I went to Boone and went to UCF. Okay. I'm zoned for Jones. Um, but I, I, I was not, I'm not a, tough person you're not, you're not like this, this chick you're not that chick I'm <laughs> just not quite you know and at the time when I was going to high school I was just a little nervous I was coming out of a private school private school in Pine Hills I'm very Orlando like mm. private school in Pine Hills is like oh okay <laughs> it was questionable but, but I was just saying like I was coming out of that and I needed a, a softer ground to land and I wasn't used to kids you know talking to their teachers any kind of way and all that kind of stuff so I was a little nervous about going to Jones no offense to the Tigers because I know y'all <laughs> y'all come hard but um <laughs> I'm proud of my school I'm glad that I went to Boone went to UCF and it was a g- great experience yeah no I thought I ain't gonna lie big I thought she was gonna be in here using some big words and we gonna, <laughs> right. you know good right. I, I, like, I hey, can do man, that too Google, but what, what is this word <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought that's what we was gonna be dealing with but um uh, okay cool so then you started modeling so let's talk about when you started modeling I actually started when I was three my sister um so I am the baby of nine technically so my mom had four my dad had four and I'm the only one of the two of them together Mm. so all of my siblings were 14 to 22 years older than me and um yeah so I my sister was 18 uh by the time I was three and she went to fashion design school and a part of her final uh, her final exam was to produce a fashion show, do all the clothes, hire the models, you know, produce the whole thing. And so I was three. I was cute. You know, I could walk and I had a little personality. And so she made a mini replica of the adult outfit and put me in it. And then I, you know, walked down the runway and people were laughing and clapping and I was into it. And mm-hmm. so I just remember like really trying to show out. You know, and this is the eighties when fashion shows are the thing. So I just I loved it. I took to it very easily and that was the modeling part. And then pageants came in when I was six. My mom brought me this pamphlet and was like, you know, is this something you want to do? And for me, I was a I was, you know, my I had three sisters. So growing up they always had me in bracelets and frilly dresses and all that stuff. I'm I'm a girl mm. all day. So when I saw the girls in these crowns and these big dresses, I was like, yeah, sign me up. I want to do that. So I read that pamphlet and read that booklet back and forth, back and forth every night before I went to sleep. Like I manifested that thing hard. So um, and my sisters and I used to watch Miss America, Miss Universe and Miss USA and all the pageants that would come on television. We used to watch that stuff. So, hey, Vic, you remember the uh, uh, coming to America? <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> right. Hey, oh, the first thought that popped in my mind as soon as she said that. Yeah, <laughs> so, um, okay, so what inspired you to start taking this on like as a profession though? Um, like to start getting into the pageants and stuff like that. Well, it was really my sister, like I said, because because of her doing the fashion shows, um, I would do her fashion shows, then I would get on to other ones because I would be like the surprise at the end. Mm-hmm. And I knew my role, and my role was to like, you know, come out there and be the cutest little thing and turn it out. You know, you got to do all the little things. And back in the day, we used to do this thing called hit it. So the the MC would do hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. And you had to like pose, 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 pose. And I used to be, what? I used to go in. So at the time, it was just like, it was natural for me. And so um, the, the aspiration to be Miss America really just came from watching it. And then when I was eight, I saw Debbie Turner who was a black Miss America. She's a third black Miss America. I I watched her win that night and that was it. I was Mm -hmm. like, oh, I gotta, 
because she was chocolate like me and it was like attainable. She wasn't, you know, Vanessa Williams. She was she was yeah. a brown skinned girl yeah. with yeah. brown yeah. eyes. Like and me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't, you know, and, and that to me made me feel like I, w- I could be pretty or I was pretty because I wasn't the the girl that had the long hair like I had a cherry curl. I had a very tragic second grade. <laughs> elementary school picture situation like it was bad <laughs> it was bad and I don't know where it's at I don't want to find it but I did have like the choppy jerry curl because you know the hairstylist messed my curl up and they cut all my hair hey, off the 80s you know it was you awful know. I looked like Michael Jackson running around with you know <laughs> <laughs> it was bad but um, there were times when I just didn't feel pretty and when I watched her win, it made me feel like I could do that. I want to do that. And so I used to just research the Miss Americas and especially the black Miss Americas. I used to, I had their pictures on my wall in college. Like I was totally obsessed in the good way. Right. You know, I brought them to me and right. now they're my friends and it's super dope because it's like my inspiration is now like they they come to me and they congratulate me on things and they want to be a part of my life and they're asking me about my daughter and it's like this is trippy that you live in I'm living my dream every single day just in that aspect of having people on my wall that have their cell phone numbers now I can call them for anything that's great. yeah I can relate you know? to, I can relate right. to that, that it, from a hip hop standpoint I can relate to that. that's cool um, all right so let's get serious for a second um, talk about these beauty pages man I want to know what is the <laughs> <laughs> she laughing. <laughs> Damn it, let's get serious. Um, <laughs> I want to know who defines what beauty is in this. Like, what's the criteria in in uh, you know beauty pageant? Well, you know, I always say that beauty pageants were never ever initiated for black girls to prosper. So this was a sport that kind of became a pastime for wealthy men who had the means to give their daughter something to do, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that did not include black women at all. And Miss America, especially, like, we weren't even allowed to compete in the pageant until 30 years after it had started. So we're 30 years behind and then another 10 years before somebody actually won. So it's just like the idea that my grandmother, auntie's mother, um, the ladies in my neighborhood, the ladies in my church never could have even aspired to be anything like this and th- right. th- that wasn't even a thought because they couldn't right. legally <laughs> so yeah. for me it's just the biggest honor to have um to have the chance to like do something that wasn't even fathomable for for black women right um what was the question? I forgot. I'm so. <laughs> I was just asking about the criteria. I'm sorry, like I'm who, sorry. who comes up with this? Like oh. okay, you could be. So let me ask you this. So based off what you just said, you know, with the like with black women at this point, we are talking about um, you know everybody associate black with negative or mm-hmm. or associate you know back in the day where they had the baby doll experiment with the black babies and mm-hmm. the white baby dolls. You know which one is pretty, which one's not. Mm-hmm. Um, that type of thing. Um, how do they create the criteria for like uh for a person like yourself how did, like how did you break pattern? how did you break that um that mold how, like how did you become well i had to go through my journey i had to go through the transition of feeling like i needed to assimilate to being what they you know what i thought that they wanted and so like right. i wore the gray contacts I used to work for an eye doctor, so I used to like, you know, he used to hook me up with different. So I had gray, I had blue, I had violet, I had all the colors because I wanted to try it. But I used to wear gray contacts like when I was 19 in the competition because I was like, this is going to make me look stand out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, chocolate black girl, gray eyes, you know, I'm going to have this long weave. I'm about to kill it. So for me, that was the idea was let me let me try to look as much like the white girls who had won in the past. But it was when I. I was able to really embrace all of what I've already got. This yeah. is this is it. When I when I go outside, it's raining, and it's wet. <laughs> poop. Right. This is what you got. So that was what helped me to get over the hump. And I think it the authenticity of me just like knowing that this is who I am. Right. I don't have to put on. I don't have to put any hair in. I don't have to do any of that. Like a couple years ago. 
this is way past Miss America, but I just decided to like shave my hair off and it wasn't some crisis. I just wanted to try it because I could wear a wig if I wanted to have hair. So I just like shaved it all the way down, like down, down, like bald, like scalp. Like Michael and, Jordan? <laughs> yeah. Okay. It was down, down. It was fly. And I got so, I got so comfortable with myself because I was like, you know what? I like the feel of my head. First of all, I've never <laughs> felt it before like right. that. And I just like being, um, I liked when, especially men would compliment me on just the fact that my face was dope yep. and it had nothing to do with like I was beautiful beyond the hair because I think sometimes we get caught up in you know hair has to be laid and have to have baby hairs and you have to have length and all of this stuff and you really don't need all that you just need to have a good spirit I want to I want to get I want to jump straight to my ghetto questions now with this <laughs> I want to go straight to my ghetto straight question. Straight to it. Um, because I've had people on here, and we act, I've actually asked this question, but since I got a beauty model in, this is the perfect person to ask. So what I want to ask is, all this stuff about, you know, the, the hair, with the, the red hair and purple hair, yellow, all that, and then these nails that's way out of here, uh, these lashes that's way over here look like a bird or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, all of this stuff, um, it, you know, cosmetics is cool, but I'm just saying, like, you don't see Miss Americas looking like that. I don't see Miss Americas up there with the long fingernails and stuff. So we was talking about the criteria of, um, you know, who, who would be Miss America and what is beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, I want to ask you your opinion. What do you think about all of that um, – exaggerated it almost looked like drag queen um mm -hmm. type of stuff what do you feel about that type of stuff for uh for for, for females i want to i want to just say keep it real and just say for our people for, for our community so um like today i feel like i'm wearing a lot of makeup because i was on stage before i came here so there is a stage makeup that's okay. thicker that you need to be able to see me from the back row right, right. that's one thing but these girls are wearing those eyelashes that look like butterflies. Like they are so long and thick and crazy looking yeah. like it's yeah. a spider. I don't understand why we feel like we have to do all of that. And it doesn't enhance your natural beauty because at one point I think the lashes were like you get the lashes and you put some lip gloss on and you have a look for the day and you look like you're made up. Yeah. But now it's just crazy. <laughs> I don't know what the what's the inspiration or what's the end goal and I think sometimes it's our way of yes it's our creativity just naturally as a people I think we are very creative and expressive in our fashion in our um, our hair um, even guys getting designs or whatever like we're just creative as a people and that's how we express ourselves and that's sometimes how we express our moods and our emotions but I think it's almost like a cover up for what we really lack Right, mm -hmm. and I want to and I want to get Vic in on this because uh, I want to see if he with me on this, bro. Yeah, I don't feel like that's for men. I think women do that for other women. Like they don't do that to impress us. How, how you feel about that? Hmm. Um, I feel like um, I'm fifty fifty. Like I feel like part of what you're saying, like I do agree, but then I feel like it's more of like. Um, Women who aren't really like, just like like you just said, Erica, Erica, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, just like you just said, um, as far as like, you know, people not really being in, tapped in with themselves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they kind of do things that kind of like, oh, well, this makes me feel this certain way. Right. Like, you know, that I don't even feel about myself mm -hmm. personally. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I, I, that's how I personally so feel. D is that attractive to you? Do you are you attracted to the women with the long fingernails, long eyelashes? Nah. Pink hair and all of that stuff. I like sapiosexual women. Mm. So. All right. I got to Google that one, man. I got to Google that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that was supposed to be hot. <laughs> okay, but even in the midst of her being sapiosexual, you still, do you still want her to, like, have an edge about her or a look or, like, like how do you? Uh, I like a woman who likes to uh, move in, in the, uh, the most authentic version of herself. I feel like um, 
Um, I feel like if a woman has to do things to make her feel beautiful, I feel like that kind of waters down who she is. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're doing it because that's what you want to do, that's what you genuinely like, just as you were speaking um, in the aspect of being creative, Mm -hmm. I can respect that. But if you're doing, I feel like most things that women do is for men. (laughs) Like, you know, I feel as though like, you know, women put on the makeup and, um, and I just feel as though like that's what makes them like appear beautiful to men. Mm-hmm. And um, it just makes me feel as though like if you don't truly feel beautiful with who you are mm-hmm. and um, would you truly, you know, operate the way that you do? Would you wear the makeup the way that you do mm-hmm. and, and the way that you do it? So it just makes me feel as though like, you know, like what is it that makes you truly want to do like me? I'm OK with going to Walmart and and PJs if that's what truly what I want to do. I don't really care if there's a beautiful women there or not, because I mean, I'm attracted to intelligence. I'm not mm-hmm. attracted. I mean, I'm attracted to beauty, but mm-hmm. that's second to me. I got, I feel you. You. I got you. I got that's you. That's impressive. Cool. So. um Yeah. Yeah. So, Vic, man, you're you going to have a surreal moment where you just bust out and start asking for numbers and stuff, right? Oh, <laughs> no, just with you, man. You start getting um, me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go Let's go to uh, 2003. 2003 is when you uh, won a title Miss Florida. Mm-hmm. Okay, and this is the, f- you are the first and only quote-unquote African-American female to hold this title. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm. I don't like the term African-American, but. I'm black. There you go. Okay, cool. <laughs> you first. I mean, I'm a black American. <laughs> right. But I'm black. In the 81 years that they've had this um, competition, you were the first and only. That That's that's something. That's a lot. Um, why do you think that is? I, I think you kind of answered that earlier, um, but I want to know, why do you think that that is, that you are the first and only? We live in Florida. <laughs> this is Florida. This right. is... Oh, next question. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Skip that one. So I'm cool. very well aware. Yeah. So 2004, the following year, you were crowned Miss America. Mm. Actually, I was crowned Miss America three months after I won Miss Florida, but because only not only three months of the year were left, so I won in September. Okay. So what you got October, November, December. So I had three months left of being. In 2003, they automatically shift you up to the next year. So okay. I was real. I won in 2003. So like this is my 20th year, but I'm titled Miss America 2004 because nine months out of the year, more time would be in 2004. Right. Until the next competition. And Miss America was traditionally, it used to always be in September okay. because like I was talking about before, originally the pageant started in 1921 as um uh, as a means of the the businessmen, the white businessmen in Atlantic City, they wanted to extend the summer season past Labor Day. So they wanted to make sure that people could come and spend money at the casinos in Atlantic City after Labor Day. So they had Miss America where they had these young ladies from mostly from the northeast that um, were competing in this bathing beauties competition by the ocean. So it was like a draw for men to come and see pretty girls so that was essentially it and then from there it has evolved but you know starting in 1921 it was really just about who could who who had when you think of survival of the fittest it's like well who's got who's got what it takes who's got enough money who is cute enough who's fine enough who's got the pedigree who's got the you know either the rich daddy or who's got you know um the charisma Mm-hmm. to be Miss America. That's what it used to be about. And so I think some of that still exists to some degree. I feel like it's not so much about, you know, how much money you have, but it's like who has that overall package of, you know, yeah. Generally, the seven judges who are here are all going to say that I like this girl on any given day. Yeah, her. You know, so that was kind of, that's how I always saw it because I don't feel like I was... I feel like there were a lot of other young ladies who were extremely qualified to have been Miss America the year that I competed. And I think that I won because I had, that was my, that was a lot of other people's dream, but it was my, it was my life. It was my dream. Like I had put so much into it. The judges told me after the fact, they were like, after you left out of interview, 
the private judges interview, they were like, we already knew you were it. You were the one because right. you were prepared and you you weren't fluffy and you weren't giving us these crazy, you know, peanut butter answers. You were giving us like <laughs> you were trying to be as authentic as possible. Amazing. So, yeah. Right. OK. All right. So um, tell us, how did this change your your life? Like the moment you became Miss America now this is a whole new world for you yes um it changed my life immediately because it was like wow if y'all get a chance to watch the youtube clip of me winning i start freaking out yeah, and i'm just saw, like yeah, I, I was just like oh my god <laughs> like oh. but that's what i felt and yeah. that moment that authentic moment got me on oprah because yeah. uh -huh. her and Gail King were watching Miss America the night that I was in. And, you know, for black girls, we always watch until the black girl's out. Right. So the black girls kept advancing. Yeah. <laughs> and that was it. And so it was me I'll and Miss Marilyn. Really real. On some real talk <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. That's true. So me and Miss Marilyn were the two black girls in top five. And so everybody just kept watching because most people thought Miss Marilyn was going to win my year because she's saying, I keep on following by Alicia Keys. So she was like hip. Mm. You know, Miss America was very classic and regal. And she came out with a leather, a gold leather pants. And she was really thin. And she strutted on the stage. She's like, I'm a keep on. <laughs> <laughs> It was cute, but it didn't win. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, the crowd, yeah, the crowd man. has spoken. <laughs> the crowd has spoken. It was cute. You know what? I thought she was gonna come in here. I don't know why. For whatever reason, I always think when I, whenever I see her, she gonna have that crown. <laughs> but uh, no, nah, but yeah, you're right. So you was you was, you've been on Oprah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that the, was uh, super amazing. She's like Oprah. Yeah. Uh -huh. see, I, that's what I say. We can have a whole full blown show on so many different categories that, that you've done. But you've been on Oprah. I'll come back. I'll come um, back. Uh, Hollywood Squares. Mm -hmm. um, live with Regis and Kelly. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Um, the O'Reilly Factor with Bill O'Reilly. Yeah. <laughs> she was on that. Yeah. Um, you also served as the Grand Marshal for the uh, NASCAR um, 500. Which was crazy, I have to tell you. So it's like. <laughs> We, we, we'll have to have another sit down at another time because I recognize that a lot of my life has been whitewashed. But like I said, I'm from Orange Center. So at the end of the day, all my cousins and all yeah. my people them from, you know, we're from a small town in Georgia. All my cousins are hood. <laughs> all my... <laughs> You know, I'm. I'm. Uh, I know a little bit about Dunlaps. You know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, shout out to Chanel. But um, I, I have, I don't know. I think that I did have. A, I had a great upbringing, but I also feel like I definitely had these moments of. Well, I feel like this might be the smarter option because, like, so much of our society is white is right. Yeah. You know, yeah, and I yeah, just yeah. I feel like there was a big part of my life where I, I followed that path right. because I w it was easier for me. It mm -hmm. was easy for me to um, to to be in their world. And sometimes it was harder. Like I'm one of those people that it's been a challenge for me. I'm too white to be black and I'm too black to be white. I never wanted to be white. Sometimes I just wanted to kind of like you know look like them because i was competing against them gotcha but i never wanted to be white i was very clear that i'm i'm a black woman all day every day i'm a very pro black person no matter if i do date white guys i'm still very pro black and they have to get on board with that so i just feel like i i don't know i feel like i i've i've balanced things out quite a bit like my life is just i can't wait to write this book i need to write the book I think so, I got another two I, or three I, years before I really, I really get into it. I really want to stay on subject, but you you pushing me towards the to, to the interview that I want to get to with you. <laughs> you like pushing me to but we not this interview. You got to promise me we gonna have you back. I'll come back because we go we gonna have a whole. I'm gonna have something drawn up for this. I'm gonna have something drawn, but I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit the drawing board. And, but um, but now nah, um, I, I want to talk about something that's kind of important, um, kind of serious. Um, so role model. Let's talk about role model for a minute. And I ain't talking about like the fashion show role model. I mean, I mean like Princess Tiara to Disney type of role model. Mm -hmm. Like what you are for these kids. Um, what you are, like how, kind of like I just said, what Princess Tiara is for Disney 
to girls, especially little black girls, um, when they see her on a cartoon, you know, when they see you, you know what I mean? Somebody in a, um, you know, Miss Florida. What does that do for you? Um, I just remember feeling like I wasn't pretty when I was younger. There was a girl who went to my school and um, she was light skinned and she had super long hair. It was super thick and everybody just automatically praised her because she was pretty little light skinned girl with long hair. Mm -hmm. And that used to really plague me because it was like yeah but I'm smarter than her or (laughs) whatever and I felt like I'm pretty too but I didn't really feel it because I didn't see it you know what I mean like my family my mother is your complexion um, and my sisters are dark skinned but I just I don't think I ever thought about whether or not they were pretty because they're my sisters like there was no competition they're so much older than me so I just I hope and pray that my um, and I know that it has because people have told me that it has. I've had young ladies that tell me that they wanted to get nose jobs until they saw I was Miss America. Mm, wow. And that that was big for me because mm-hmm. at one point I thought I needed a nose job. Wow. Which is crazy. But I felt like I didn't have enough, enough, you know, just stupid, just just. Um, comparing myself and then going back to your point about like girls wearing the hair and the nails and all this I think some of these girls are really trying to keep up with Instagram and trying to keep Mm -hmm. up with the celebrities Mm -hmm. and hip hop celebrities and it's like you cannot be Meg Thee Stallion there can only be one Right. right there can only be one Ice Spice there can only be one Nikki there can there's only one and she it's okay to influence but at some point you have to just work with what you've been given mm-hmm. right. and not try to be somebody else because that's just crazy. Why do you need to look like another person in order to be validated that you are it? Right. Mm-hmm. You need to feel like you are it every single morning when you wake up. So I hope that that's what my being Miss America has done for little girls and little chocolate girls, especially is just to remind them that you don't have to be light skinned to be considered beautiful yeah. because that's that colorism BS that we have been fed right. since slavery yeah. that you're not beautiful unless you are mixed blood or unless yeah, you, you know what? <clears throat> no offense. No, I'm just, I, I, I got I to gotta flex <laughs> one time for the, for the light skin. Because people are, oh, you know, light skin played out. I'm like, bro, I ain't never been played out. Let them know. Let me pop we, the color we, up. I, we ain't never had a problem. I don't never. know what that is. <laughs> I ain't never had a problem. I put it that way. But anyway, <laughs> colorism. Yeah, dump it. We ain't dealing with no colorism. Dump mm-hmm. the colorism. Um, but I want to ask you this though because you started to do some amazing things after you became uh miss america uh one of them is uh you was on this show uh the amazing race uh the 15th uh season i think that was or episode somewhat uh it was a reality show that was on uh cbs and uh you and your partner placed third in this uh competition mm-hmm. so that means you guys did really well we made it to the end okay we made it to that the was end. the point <laughs> make it to the end do not you know I went on to that show saying to myself you know I'm a winner like this is I win so I cannot lose on international television not yeah. just national television but in front of God and family I cannot lose right. we can't lose mm. so that was what I how I went into it um, we lost every single episode up to the finale and lost the finale but that was a lot because mm, mm, y'all ain't ready it's on my midnight musings we were not equally yoked we were not at the core we were not good partners so that's the real reason why we didn't win that little show Ah. in my opinion like if we were partners if we was partners if we was spade partners because the you feel me? We would have won that show, but right. we were the not. Is, the show is basically like you and your partner have to figure things out or something like that. It's right? like a scavenger hunt around the world. Okay, I got So you. we started in L.A. and all the groups, there was 12 groups, and we were all lined up, and we had to do the first challenge. And the first challenge was to find a license plate from um, Japan. <laughs> 
and there was like 200 license plates lined up and we had to find this license plate and it had to have like a certain symbol on it. So you got 200 license plates all across this big long wall and you're competing with 10 other or 11 other couples n- not married couples like some were father son and you know t- teams yeah. so you're competing with these other teams to find there was only 10 of them up there oh, so we man. Hey, it I, was like pressure listen, was on yeah. I would have I would have lost my done the pressure was <laughs> crazy and that show right there I think I would have lost my done lap. <laughs> 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 hey, so so, yeah. let me, let me so that was it, the it beginning was, of it it was obviously his fault where y'all <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Duh. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so that, so that, that, that took a toll. So that was it. the beginning of it. And then once you got the license plate, you had to like literally stand on this mat. And once you stood on the mat, then they would, you know, verify that it was the right one. Then they would give you a ticket to the next location. So the next location was Japan mm. because that was the license plate, right? So we get to the mat. We got, you know, we got through that first leg, and it was it was downhill from there. And it was probably three days into the competition where it was like, oh, that's why my mama didn't want me to marry you. Like wow. you are not it for me. Mm. I knew it. Three days in, I was like, I got to get through the next 30 days because it's a 30 day competition. I think we were out there for 27. Officially, we got back home on day 29. Mm. So when I tell you I I had to fake it till I made it to the point that I mean, we were married. This is a game. (laughs) Yeah, it was bad. This was a game. man. It's a game, but it was like my real life. This man lost his whole middle America over a game. (laughs) No, she never went to that game. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I remember that day we were in Vietnam. And we're sitting out and it was like rainy and cold. We don't know any of these other people. And he was over there trying to like <laughs> form alliances and be friends with them. And I'm like, we don't know them, dude. Like when we go back home, we got to pay these bills. Right. We got to like do laundry. Oh, we got to What are you doing? We got to do real life together for real. Like right. we're not play play marry couples. We are actually <laughs> What are you doing? Hey, hey, listen. Well, this is scary, but this is scary. Y'all don't know how so sur- that's the surreal moment right there. I didn't even I'm in Vietnam and I'm not in war and I'm literally sitting there like what am I doing with this white boy in Vietnam like oh my god we had to sleep outside Mm. <laughs> and they had lawn chairs and like it's production. Uh, all right, all right, all right. I, I wanna, can't give it. I don't want to do the man like that. Let's, no, let's, no, no, no. He I, was I all right. My, dig- my dignity is. <laughs> he was all right. He was I, like I said. Next he was a great question. appetizer. <laughs> Have you had a She's great kidding. appetizer? Like great you get to the restaurant, you're like, oh, I'm so hungry. Oh, and then oh, you have this really great <laughs> soup, and you're like, oh, that soup was everything. But I'm ready for this. I'm about to get this meat. <laughs> Do you hear me? I'm sorry, but it's you like, I'm ready for you know. some steak. That's so I'm bad. ready for That's some bad. really bad. great chicken. I feel so bad for this man right now, man. I, I, I'm hurting right now. Oh, oh my God. He was a good soup. I'm ready for this. Oh, my goodness. All right, all right, all right. All right. Y'all got me acting up. Okay. It is not even late enough to be acting Only up. 90, wow. 91 crazy. points. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I got to rebound with a nice strong question now. Oh man! All right, okay, cool. So you know, we t- okay. So we talked about you. <laughs> I can't do this, man. <laughs> We're almost there. We did good. We did okay, good. Right, good. All right, let's pull it together. Let's pull it together. Man, I feel so sorry for that brother, man. All right, um. Don't. I mean, he's remarried no, it's all and good. he has you know, a TV show now and I'm kind of pissed that he's got a TV show. I made him, you know, made, I made a man whoa. out of him. No. And so whoa. I'm a little bit upset, but I'm good. She said I, I need my royalties. You know, I'm going to get my time. <laughs> <laughs> he's remarried to a young lady that I think is perfect for him. All right, all right, Miss, I, didn't, I didn't know you was a savage. Miss <laughs> 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 America's a savage. On the I'm just already. saying. Wow. I'm not even putting on. I'm for real. I... <laughs> like, <laughs> if you guys saw what she looks like, and it is my goodness, she's a, she's a killer. She's a killer. I All right, can't. Um, 
<laughs> All right, let's talk about let, oh, let's, talk, let's talk let's talk about the mother. Oh. Let's talk about Erica Dunlap, the mother. Okay. <laughs> okay. The little baby, the innocent. Baby. <laughs> You're not gonna race it that way. Okay, so um, you had a child late in the game. I call it late in the game. I consider it late in the game. Um, how do you feel about that? Uh, would, I mean, oh god, is there any kind of so much. Would you wish you had done this earlier in life, right on time, or you know? She uh, was. She is my divine appointment. I say that all the time. She was not a mistake. She was not a oops. Her dad and I are not together, and life is good. She came at the perfect time. Her birthday is 10 30 2020. Like, she got here on the perfect day. Yeah. She's, she's perfect to me. And I know that she has such a big future ahead, and she has such a great purpose. And she's only two, but she's showing me, like, she shows me evidence every day that she is, she is on purpose. Like, she knows what she wants. Mm -hmm. She knows what she doesn't want. Let me tell you what happened last night, real quick, about this little girl that I love so much who gets on my, you know, she gets on my last good nerve. <laughs> last night, so Sunday, <laughs> she had a fever, right? This is like double ear infection and fever. It is crazy. Wait till you have, oh, okay. you have kids. I start doing <laughs> Two is crazy. So she gets this double ear infection, probably from swapping boogers at daycare. <laughs> like, I don't know what these kids be doing, but every other week she's sick. So we yeah. are at the two, ER. So two, we yeah. go to the ER because my mom's like, this baby is hot. She's got a fever. So we go to the ER. And we're sitting up in there for like four hours. And I'm like thinking of all the other things I could be doing with my time. But this is my child and I love her so much. And I want to make sure she's, you know, well. Uh -huh. And so we do all the tests and they give us the medicine. Then they told us that the follow up was in two days. The next medication, the next dose was um, was in two days and it was two pills that you have to crush up and put in applesauce, put in food and give it to them, right? So I'm like, all right, cool. So I go to the CBS, I get the pills, I crush them up, I put them in the applesauce, everything's going great. I give her the applesauce, cause I'm like, you haven't been feeling well, you want some applesauce? She took one bite of it and then she threw it across the room. She threw it across the room and said, it's nasty. <laughs> this, I, I, I sacrifice to go and get you this medicine in the first place. This is critical for your care and for making sure that you can go back to daycare so mommy can resume her activities during the day when you're at daycare. And you're not taking it. You threw it across the rooms. Like, she totally disrespected me. Like, <laughs> it's nasty. <laughs> like, oh, my God. So she's very sure of herself. And if she don't want it, she ain't going to eat it. She don't. If she doesn't want to watch it, she's not going to watch it. If she don't want to listen to it, she'll tell me, Shh. like... Mm. It's very sincere. This is showing me a lot. Yeah. And I'm glad that I became a mother. I'm glad I did it when I did. She's just perfect. And even though she works me, yeah. she's so sweet. Yeah. Well, so, you know, the thing is, you've had time to, you know, be as successful as you, you know, all of the levels of success that you've reached. You know what I'm saying? You've had your time to do all of that. So now it's like a different chapter for you. You know, that's, that's awesome that you... Are able yeah, to see, you know because think about it you might not have been Miss America had you you know uh, yeah you know so started earlier right and yeah. I could have and when I think about some of the girls that I grew up with we have completely different lives and lifestyles and mm -hmm. I'm so grateful that I was able to follow the path I did I don't feel like I'm better than anybody I just know that I had different experiences and my mama was not having it like. Whoa! I, I tell my wife that all the time. I say we are different people. Everyone's different people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't, I can't stand when people try to give relationship advice because I'm like, okay, it might work for you and your mm -hmm. man, but it won't work for this. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. everybody's yeah. different. It's like like somebody is just like, this works for me. Try this. It's gonna work for you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Nah, man. I mean, it's different. Yeah. Um, so I want to talk about you as a singer. Um, I want to talk about you as a singer. You left, from what I understand, you left Florida to go to Nashville to pursue a, a, a check this out, a career, a music career in country music. Mm. Hey. Mm. Check that out. I felt like I could. I had one Miss America, and it was like, what else? What else do I want to do? If if you could do something 
uh, like, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Mm. You've heard that right. phrase yeah. before, right? And that mm-hmm. was my thing. I was like, yeah. man, I've been doing this country thing for a minute. I'm pretty good because I just, I just, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a linguist. I'm an actress. I'm a performer. So oh. I naturally just have that country twang. I've been doing that since I was a kid, and it was always a showstopper for audiences because they were like, "This little black girl can sing some country." Right. <laughs> and so I would just like really lay it on thick and. It wasn't inauthentic because I felt like it was natural. Like I went to this private school with a lot of white kids and that's what we listen to. We listen to you listen to what your peers listen to. Right. So do you write the music? Mm-hmm. Okay. In Nashville you 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 should be a writer. You don't have to be, but you should be. So I had to learn how to become a songwriter. So you are you over here writing about like pickup trucks and, and <laughs> dogs and what kind of whiskey you Cows drink? and forms. Uh, <laughs> what okay. the country songs I hear. Like, you know. <laughs> no, I was writing songs about Uh, relationships that I hadn't had yet but Uh I was getting there so like one of my songs was um, don't let me meet it on the corner don't let me hear it on the corner and meet it on the street and that country music is about the um, it's about like the the metaphors you know what I'm saying any one of y'all want to do it what is it it? (laughs) let's look let's look let's look Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. You want to do it or you What's want me to happening? do it? Well, you know what? Hold on. Let me get on this song. I'm, gonna take I'm so confused. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Okay. Oh, you want me to do it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for the surreal moment. <laughs> you know what that is. See, see, you see, see, she don't even follow me on Facebook. So I don't know what she don't do know. She, she, I know I'm she don't all do. dead. I can't even do it to make right. Like, I'm sorry. Okay, so the uh, surreal moment is anytime we, usually we have an MC or something like that in the building. Uh-huh. We always got to put you on the spot. We got to get some, some mm. we would have to get some bars from you if you can rap. <laughs> <laughs> but we were, I want to hear some of this country music, especially yeah. some of this, this stuff you done wrote. I want to hear, you know, oh. uh, cause I, and I want to hear, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't country me. Give me two pin your clock. You know what I'm saying? Something like that. I want to hear what you got. First of all, you need to, you. I, I encourage you to listen to, just try something different. Every once in a while, just listen to a little country music. Hey, I like Oh my Alan, gosh, like y'all Alan are really Jackson doing me that. right That's now. That's right there. Okay, um, one of my songs or just a song? Anything, you, like. anything you could give us. Let anything, it go. Let's just hear whatever, whatever you feel right now. Would you, <laughs> would you hear some of that country sign? Oh my gosh! Um, okay, so one of my one of my songs that I had on my because I I produced the EP, so um, <laughs> this is so funny. So let it flow. So Just funny. let it flow. <laughs> let it flow. <clears throat> I've been right. I've been wrong. I've been weak. I've been strong. I think it's time I thought about moving on. Oh baby, can't you see? I've been in love too long I've been smart, been a fool Played the game by the rules When you wake up in the morning Boy, I'll be gone Ain't nothing that you did (laughs) I've been in love too long Ooh, I can't wait. I'm ready to jump on somebody <laughs> horse. Hey. <laughs> hey, I can't. I can't hey, listen. I ain't gonna lie to you. I can't wait for Pillow Talk tonight. This is gonna be, this is gonna be something right That's here. Crazy. Okay. I was not yeah, trying to do that tonight. Hey huh? <laughs> <laughs> man, I am not gonna lie to you. I'm sitting here looking at you. And hearing the voices coming Yo. out. That's so wow. funny. Okay. This is yeah. wild. This is, I am this, wildly this talented. Is the, I will pat myself on the back this for is that. the wildest <laughs> Real Talk Radio episode that we've had for a, for the whole year. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is the wildest one. All I right. wasn't <clears> expecting <throat> that at all. Y'all got listen, me over here flushed. You wasn't expecting it. <laughs> <laughs> right. I wasn't expecting <laughs> But the question is, does it sound okay? Like, oh, no, was, no, was, no, was, like Because like I feel like I want to like yeah. pull that song back out. Like, there's some songs that I nah, had where that were gems. Yeah, nah. Some that good was, stuff. That sound yeah. like some real country music. Yeah, you right, got it, then you. Okay, I got one more I want to show you. I want to oh, share this one with you because... This is the essence of songwriting. Right. This is an old song, but I re-recorded it, and um, it's like a talking song, but it's so good. It was um, it was down on the corner. It was late last night. It was me and my baby having a hard down fight, and it was like this whole. 
I, I'm forgetting the rest of it, but it's just like you need to tell the story, like mm-hmm. tell the story in such a way that, you know, people can relate. Like mm-hmm. you have been, you know, down on the corner late at night and you're like, man, I can't stand him. Right. I can't stand her. <laughs> ah, I just got to get out of the house. Like, you know, those are the kinds of things that resonate with me. It's not even about I, I don't drive in a pickup truck you know I, I I did have a dog but I had to get my dog away when I had the baby it's been a lot I've had a hard life but <laughs> I used to have a dog and he was so good to me but um, you know I've had some things but now I feel like I have more I have I have real oh my god I have so much real life experience that I could lend to some really good country songs at this point like uh, it's time to bring it back out. So thank you for the encouragement. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely stick with it because it <laughs> sounds like country music. <clears throat> All right. So what are you? Uh, what are you currently busy doing right now? Oh, so I am. I'm a boss babe. I have a, a, a communications company, and um, one division of the communications company is an entertainment division, if you will. And so I'm expanding that this year. Um, at the end of last year, I ended the year with my Christmas show, and I've been doing that for six years. Uh, we ha- we did take two years off because of COVID, but for years prior, we had um, a Christmas show, and my goal was to make it like a celebration of Christmas that I would listen to in my house growing up. And so, you know, the Temptations. Silent Night was always playing and just the soulful music that I don't know gets celebrated often enough. So we had um, six performers, six singers, and we had dancers. We had youth that were a part of the show and it was at the Dr. Phillips Center uh, in December and it was sold out show and it was just like super exciting to be able to share um, my love for Christmas. My birthday is December 29th, so I just love Christmas. It's my you, it's you my time. Sold, she done sold out the Dr. Phillips cinema. You you so you balling. <laughs> I was in the small theater, Dang. but I sold it out. Doesn't matter. <laughs> a win is a win. Dang. There you go. That's a good way to look at it. <laughs> so even though I was in the little theater, um, it just felt good to know that people wanted to come to my show. People wanted to support people above and beyond just my friends and family. It was like the community. I had a whole table of Asian people that I have no idea who they were but they found out about it and they bought tickets and they wanted to be there so that's what I want like they didn't know that she was a diverse group of people (laughs) (laughs) I want you all to come and get this music get this work right (laughs) yeah all right, so you got a big show coming up uh, Friday. No, 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 no. What is? Yeah, Friday. Friday, Friday night. Friday mm-hmm. night, and you doing it over at the um. So this so we had Angelica in here. Uh, what was that? Wednesday? When, last Wednesday. Last Wednesday. Um, yeah, we had Angelica, and uh, she was telling us about this show. You and Jabari Clay is gonna um headline over at the uh, Irish Shannons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so. more of my community work. You know, I gotta be. I gotta be where the people are. Okay. So we are. Um, but you're not doing country over there, are you? <laughs> no. But one day I might. Okay. I might just oh. pull it out because well, I got some boots. Well, I well, might pull it out. So what? We, what can we expect over? No, here? it'll definitely be more. That's that's where I. Um, you know, that's where I let let my hair down. And I get a little ratchet. Like I'm with my people, so I'm able to sing the songs that I've always wanted to sing. Okay. And you know, don't really have the platform to do that. So what I'm grateful for in that space is that I get to just be homegirl Erica and I get to do it around people orange, who orange center, Erica. <laughs> right. I get to do it around people who uh, want to be there want to enjoy it the vibe is right you know yeah. and I just get to be <coughs> who I always wanted to be so um, what Ooh, am I doing this I week I'm a, oh man I ain't gonna be here I'm gonna be out of town Chanel birthday is tomorrow oh happy ah. birthday yeah, happy birthday. Next time. I, I won't be yeah, we'll, we'll be back again because we were doing it consistently for uh, about nine months. Jabari, Angelica, and I were headlining the show, and then we started adding other talent, and then life just started to happen. It was, it was impractical for me to do, you know, uh, a Friday night show sometimes because I had other priorities going on. So I'm glad to be back. I'm looking forward to it. 
Um, we're gonna rock. We're gonna have a great time. It'll be a vibe. I'm doing. I'm doing some. I'm doing Whitney Houston and Erica Badu. Mm. Oh, so, Whitney Houston. That's my. Now that's my favorite female vocalist of all time. Mm-hmm. This is wild. She's <clears throat> it. She is. She is the voice. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. It's gonna be fun. All right. Well, um. I want to, before we get up out of here, I want to give you time to give you shout outs and uh, your social media, put that all out there and stuff like whatever, whatever you do, don't say nothing about that dude. I made him. <laughs> he, doing, he doing the show now and I made I him. I my royalties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Po buddy, I'll, I'll po leave buddy, that alone. Man. I, I'll I, leave I, that I alone. I got to do my research on Buddy now. I just want, I just want to see what it looks like. <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> now, I mean, I'll Smith's give it to him. He was, he was, you know, and he still is like there's there are women with they love him like they love him he's he's an attractive guy and he's got a lot going for him so he's got a lot of charisma so um yeah, he's always gonna do well <laughs> let's just get these shout outs <laughs> does it get worse <laughs> shout out you know right whatever um, so you, let your people know you love good them. appetizer uh, <laughs> so yeah wow. i want to shout out to uh to angelica sanchez who you all just mentioned um, that is my sister, and she uh, was the one who introduced me to making sure I check my <laughs> check my DMs so I knew that you know I've yeah, got an invitation. Yeah, yeah. So yes, I um, I want to shout her out and thank you very much, sis. And then I mean, shout out to my family. Shout out to the Dunlaps. <laughs> <laughs> far, far and near. Are you? Is this? Are you? Did you Google him? <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, oh my, my god! Oh my god! Oh, he, he loves his Miss America. All right, oh so, my um, god! <laughs> <laughs> so How am I you, supposed uh, to let it go? If you <laughs> over there googling? All right. So the people that want to get in contact with you about your your charity work and yes. all that good stuff, social media and all that. Yes, my social media is at Erica Dunlap for everything, and I spell Erica E R I C K A. So I have the C and the K, and um, that's how you can find me. So at Erica Dunlap on everything, and yeah, I'm I'm working on my content because I have to admit it has been really challenging, especially with having a little kid, and mm-hmm. you know you got to be on your phone a lot when you're trying to edit stuff and come mm-hmm. up with reels and come up with captions, and it's work. It's real hard work. So shout out to all the people who are doing the work on social media and making a living off of it because I am trying to get my royalties from more than one stream. Okay, right. I want my royalties from him, and I also want <laughs> some YouTube money. I would also like to have some Instagram funding coming in like Mm -hmm. I want all of it I want some TikTok action so I'm working on that right now more content that's a lot more useful and better all right, cool. Well, we're going to uh, play some music from around the way with DJ Rogue when we get up out of here. But um, I'm going to play this song. I'm going to play this song right here. And this is, it has nothing to do <laughs> with, with Mr. Man or nothing like that. But I just wanted to play this song. So uh, hope y'all enjoyed the show. That was the savage Eric oh Dunlap <laughs> right here on Surreal Talk Radio. I've enjoyed you. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> 